have been filling holes in your teeth with mercury amalgam for more than a century, and it seems most dentists think this stuff is the best material for the job. Others say any amount of mercury in fillings poses a serious health risk. A federal report released last, last November suggested a limit of four amalgam fillings for adults, one for children. Now, this weekend, representatives from both sides of the debate met in Toronto to talk about the issue with federal health officials. Our next two guests were at that weekend meeting. Elke Babiuk is with the Health Action Network Society in Calgary. Dr. Derek Jones is the head of the Biomaterials Division at Dalhousie University here in Halifax. Good morning. Good morning. Good, Dr. Jones, what happened at that meeting? What was the consensus? Well, there was uh, a consensus, and uh, essentially the major purpose, of course, as you pointed out, was to review the... Um, the report which had been prepared uh, by um, a representative of the health protection branch, Dr. Mark Richardson. And uh, we debated that and of course we had had probably about six or eight weeks in which to deliberate on this report and analyze it in detail. And uh, at that meeting uh, I personally provided evidence which had input from 13 scientists from six different countries and the uh, evidence I provided clearly illustrated that the report was flawed, that the scientific basis for uh, the inputs which were utilized in the calculations were inappropriate. And uh, for this reason, the report was in fact not accepted in terms of limiting the number of amalgam fillings. Ms. Babiak, you were at the meeting. You heard the arguments. I take it, though, you still support the Richardson report and recommendations. We do support the Richardson report. Um, like I said before, we uh, determined that you couldn't differentiate between health and disease in, in the number of fillings, four or five fillings. But uh, it was extremely difficult because that, that meeting was stacked in favor of the status quo. And we were left with the impression that this would not be a consensus meeting, so we are very disappointed with the outcome. We believe it was a, an abusive process that Health Canada should be embarrassed about. Tell me about your experience, Ms. Babiak, with m amalgam fillings. Um, I became very ill after extensive dental restorations in 1987. And uh, a couple of years ago, I made the connection by doing my own research that, that some of my problems could be attributed to the mercury that, that is in the restorations that I had. I subsequently had them removed and gained tremendous health benefits from doing so. Dr. Jones, does this make sense to you? Well, I'm, I'm certainly sympathetic for, with, with uh, Ms. Bebiak for, for the sorts of complaints and the, the uh, suffering that she had, but I have to point out that there is no scientific evidence to support the uh, contention that her symptoms were in fact related to, to mercury from her amalgam fillings. Well, we know mercury is toxic. It makes some common sense, I suppose, that having a toxic substance in your mouth all the time might not be best for your health, Dr. Jones. Uh, well, the evidence we have, the scientific evidence, is that there is no uh, evidence to support the, the contention that uh, dental amalgam poses any health hazard, and uh, this is internationally agreed. Uh, admittedly, mercury is a toxic uh, element. The amount that is given off from uh, the fillings in, in the person's uh, mouth is relatively small, and in point of fact, the calculations that we uh, carried out with colleagues in Sweden that I personally presented at the meeting uh, with the Health Protection Branch showed that in order to reach the level of mercury that had been suggested by Dr. Richardson's report, which was 26 micrograms per cubic meter in air, based on an industrial study, um, in order to reach that level of mercury in your mouth, you would need 1,290 amalgam surfaces. And this is uh, quite a, uh, a large number of restorations. There's nobody in the world that could... Uh, clearly have so many fillings in their mouth. So, so the, the estimate was grossly uh, uh, overestimating the, the problem and uh, there is no scientific evidence to link mercury to any health hazard uh, in an individual. We don't have any scientific evidence to support that. Ms. Babiak, you're, you're gritting your teeth. Yes, I am, actually. The scientific evidence that we do have was good enough for foreign countries 
to restrict mercury amalgam fillings in pregnant women, in children, and people with kidney disease. And this evidence comes from the University of Calgary. It is experimental scientific evidence that shows that there are potential risks to mercury amalgam fillings. As a Canadian, I am deeply ashamed that we are allowing other countries to use Canadian research and not moving to, on our own research to restrict amalgam fillings, especially in children. Well, look, I have a mouthful of, of fillings. I don't know what they are. It could be plutonium in there. But what do I do about the state of my fillings, Ms. Babiak? What's your recommendation? Well, I would suggest to you that if you are in good health, that you don't do anything about them at all. And when it comes time to replace them, in other words, when they have to be replaced, then I would suggest that you should consider alternatives. Dr. Jones, my kids also have a couple of fillings. Should I be worried about this? Not at all. There is no scientific evidence to support the limitation of the use of dental amalgam uh, in, in the general population. Uh, I have a grandson who has zero fillings. He's six years old. He doesn't have any fillings. This is not uncommon. And in fact, uh, for the average twel up to 12 years of age individual youngster, they, they on average have about one filling. We see less and less uh, fillings in young children. And certainly adults have uh, fillings. People of my age, I think I've got eight restorations that are amalgam, and I'm certainly not having them taken out or replaced. Is there any material that you prefer to amalgam? Uh, there are alternative materials. Obviously, one could have in certain situations, and it depends on the clinical uh, interpretation of the needs, but uh, a gold inlay, for example, could certainly uh, be preferred in certain situations, and albeit it's much more expensive. Uh, some ceramic uh, inlays can be utilized. Uh, mm -hmm. Other materials that are available um, are slightly less desirable in, in, in situations where there's a lot of... Uh, uh, chewing taking place and stress placed upon the, the teeth. I'm afraid we have to leave it at that. Thank you both. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. It's very poisonous.